Welcome to a brand new series, Sleeping Giants, Red Star Belgrade. Now, um, this the Sleeping Giants series was what won the poll um, to choose my new series. Now, I had a pretty hard time picking a team to do the new series with once it was all very well with you guys picking that, but then I had to try and sit down and think about what team I actually wanted to do this save with, basically. Um, there was a lot of great suggestions. Um, some people didn't quite get why. I think I basically didn't explain myself very well with what I meant by Sleeping Giants. So, um, what I meant by Sleeping Giants was not teams like AC Milan. Like, I didn't mean teams that hadn't won, like, something for, like, a couple of years. I meant, like, a, a longer period of time. Like, teams from yesteryear, like, teams like, um, I don't know, you probably heard, Pro Vicelli, like, in Italy, that were sort of in the early days of football were absolutely dominant in the Italian leagues. And they're now playing um, Serie B, I think. I think they've had to be reformed a couple of times, though. Teams like that, and teams like... I can't think... Like, the Mike, the Mighty Maggi, uh, Maggies, and teams like uh, Ferenc Varos, and sort of the Hungarian teams that were very strong, I think, back in the 50s, potentially. And eventually I decided to settle on Red Star Belgrade. Basically, what I did is I had a look at some of the teams that had won uh, European Cups and come close and done re had been dominant at times, but had sort of faded away in recent years. And... Two, the ones I was really stuck between, eventually, it was either going to be Stour Bucharest or Red Star Belgrade, both of whom have won the equivalent of the Champions League, although at the time, obviously, it was the European Cup. But Red Star Belgrade won the European Cup in 1991. They're the only team, I believe, from that part of Eastern Europe that have ever won the European Cup, which is a massive achievement. They've also reached several other European finals. I believe they also won the Intercontinental Cup in the same season. Um, have also reached the Euro... Uh, UEFA Cup final several times in their history, I believe. Now, they actually won the league last season in Serbia, but the previous few years before that, they'd basically been sort of, they'd fallen off the pace and were second to Partizan, their main rivals across the city. And that is, I think, going to be one of the fun things about this series. Like, we are actually not expected to win that. We are sort of challenging, basically. I haven't actually even sat down with the, uh, the uh, chairman yet to talk about that sort of stuff, but I have already had a look at some other things. I'm going to go do that in a sec. I just wanted to do this little introduction video for you guys so I can sort of explain about what I want to do with this series. Now, their main rival, of course, is Partizan Belgrade. Now, also, by the way, if anyone knows how to exactly pronounce the team name properly, like, obviously I'll be calling them Red Star, but as you can see, that is obviously not what they're called. This is obviously the Serbian name, which I believe, and I don't know if this is correct, is pronounced um, Shravina, Zve uh, Shravina Zvezda. If that is correct, then let me know. If not, please, like, give me a phonetic way of saying it, because I really do want to get that right, or I don't want to butcher the, yeah, pronunciation on this team's name. They've got a very rich history, despite only being founded in 1945, um, I'm guessing just after the Second World War. Of course, they were the most successful team in Yugoslavia's history, and of course, when the Yugoslavia broke up, they were in Serbia, and have been very, very successful since then, winning many, many league titles along the way, uh, generally battling between them and, obviously, Partizan Belgrade. And their derby against Partizan Belgrade is known as the Eternal Derby, which, for a start, sounds absolutely bloody magical, and apparently is one of the sort of hotly contested, most fiercely uh, contested rivalries in world football, you know, up there with sort of the Super Classico and El Clasico and uh, some of those big continental derbies basically so that's going to be a fun game to participate in we have very very good youth facilities um well great youth facilities i don't know how that rates in comparison to some of the other sides but i'm pretty certain that we've got at least one of the best in this league and our training facilities of course up there too now you'll notice that i have the kits I have kit packs for both the top two divisions in Serbia, but I'm pretty certain if you're that desperate, there are actually ones for lower down. I got these all off of Sword Out SI, so I will put a link to these kit packs in the description, though, if you are interested. Uh, as well as I have a 3D kit pack, which I also got off of there, which was really surprising to see a 3D kit pack for the Serbian leagues, but it was awesome that it was there. So we will actually have proper in-game kits as well, which is kind of cool. So yeah, that is a little, just a little run through of so why I chose um, Red Star, basically. I really like the name as well, Red Star. It's just something like a little bit different, and I really did want to manage this. And the other reason I chose this series was because, not this series, but this team, was because a lot of people have said they wanted to see me take a team from a slightly less fancied nation that was sort of the top of that and try to take them to some European glory. And I figured that this would be a good way of doing both of those things at the same time. So to tackle the Sleeping Giants issue, but at the same time also manage to cover that kind of thing. So I think, you know, I was never going to be able to make everybody happy with whatever 
whatever series one because everybody does one different things and I can't do that I can't do everything at once I do want to do all of those other things this year as well though, so I wouldn't worry about that I really want to do an MLS save I want to do a lower league save all of this kind of stuff will definitely happen this year so I wouldn't worry now the overall objective of this series is for us to try and win a European trophy with Red Star Belgrade. Obviously, I'd like it to be the Champions League, but if it is end up being the Europa League, then you never know. But I, I would like to try and win the Champions League and return them to their former glory of that 1991 Cup, uh, not Cup Winners' Cup, European Cup win. So that is the idea there. Now, we've got some, I mean, bear in mind that team that won the 1991 uh, European Cup features some big names of football like if you people like Darko Panchev, Sinisa Mihailovic and who else Robert Prozanecki was playing in that game he played in that final all three of those guys did and they are big names in football like if you go back a bit they are huge names in football um, and some Pompey fans will also recognize Robert Prozanecki potentially as well so a little bit of a link there across the uh, arc so basically I have actually already started looking at tactics for the team based on the sort of players that we've kind of got and we've got some decent players at this club i got to say I mean by our standards and we're one of the better teams in this league so i got to tell you it's going to be a fun season I'm thinking um so there won't be an ep obviously it won't be a game in today's episode because I'm literally this is the first day of the season I've literally just set up the database had a little look at the tactics but in the next uh, episode you will obviously see our first uh, game of the season which I believe let's just have a little look at the schedule and see who that is against our first game of the season is in the top flight uh, in in the Superliga against Novi Pazar and as you can see proper kits and everything very very nice so yeah we've also got some friends we've got friendly against Cluj who I believe are Romania we've got Zlin um, I'm, I'm guessing they maybe Hungarian team. Yeah, um, <laughs> with a you can always tell with the Hungarian teams because they've got the um, a lot of sort of accents and stuff on the letters. I, I won't even attempt to pronounce it. I'm sorry. And we've got Ashkoli and also Evian. So yeah, the other thing I want to show you is the tactics, and I'll take a little look through the team as well. But we'll show you it via the tactics. This is the kind of tactic I'm going to try and play. Now, I don't like to use the same tactic in more than one save, basically, which is why I decided that again, I take some of the things I've learned over the past two saves, the Pompey and the St. Pauli save, and try to merge that into something a little bit different. And obviously, I massively want your opinions on what you think of the way we're going to be setting up this year. Anyways, you could give me pointers without being like, oh, change everything. And Well, no, I'm not going to change everything. I just like to try and make a tactic work like this. I, I just want to do something a little bit different. So this is the kind of tactic we're looking at. It's a 4-2-3-1, essentially. Um, but we're looking at two fullbacks, both on attacking. We've got a central, two central defenders, of course, one on cover, one on defend. Then we have two defensive midfielders. So certainly got some defensive solidity here. I know there's a big gap, but this... I think there's a way we can make this work as well. We've got um, a halfback set to defend, and we've got a deep line playmaker, because I figured if we're going to have two defensive midfielders, one needs to basically play like that halfback kind of role. Maybe I'll change him to an anchor man, though. It, it depends, because we do have two of them, so maybe he'd be better off as an anchor man, but we'll, we'll trial and error. We've got a deep line playmaker to try and bring things out. He's on support, which means he will start to bring the ball out as well. We've got wingers set to attack because we are going to be one of the better sides in this league. So it makes sense that we would be an attacking base side. I know we've got a solid defensive base, but it makes sense that we'd have lots of attacking threat. We also, we're going to be playing um, a slightly, I've never tried this. This is, uh, I don't know how, is it Engange? Enganch? Engange? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I wanted to try this one out because I figured this would be a good time. And it's acting like a pivot in that area. And that's why I'd like to try and use that. And up front, we're going to go for a defensive forward purely because... Um, Georgie Rakic is a really good defensive forward and I think it kind of sits that suits where the system is going to work out for us also we're on an attacking mentality because we're obviously one of the better sides in this league so we're generally going to be on top of most games anyway just because of our pure quality we're going to be fluid um, instead of flexible I usually use flexible we're going to go for fluid just to give a bit more for fluidity as for team instructions, what I've got so far, obviously exploit the flanks and looking for overlap because we do have good wingers, much higher tempo and be more expressive because we can do, prevent goal, uh, short goalkeeper distribution, that will work well with the uh, deep line forward anyway, uh, not de deep line forward, defensive forward, um, push higher up because to try and close that space down a little bit and run at defense because we've got some, some decent players. Of course, retaining possession will be very helpful for that kind of thing. So it's one of those things that obviously I massive, I want your opinions on the way we can make this tactic better because obviously I'm just, this is my initial thoughts and I've not set up set pieces, captains, any of this sort of stuff or individual player instructions. I will go and do that in a sec before we do the uh, first preseason games. So there you have it, guys. Um, I hope that doing this save is going to be exciting for you because I'm really looking forward to it. I've never done a save with a team in Eastern Europe before. I, I managed a Bulgarian... Actually, no, I did manage a Bulgarian side briefly on FM14, but 
this is going to be a good one. I'm really looking forward to doing this. It's nice to do something a little bit different. So I hope you guys will enjoy this as well. Um, let me know what you guys think of this in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next episode where we will be talking over some potential summer transfers as well as showing you my sort of tactical changes. And we will be doing the live com against Novi Pazar in the first game of the season. So I'll see you guys then. Uh, so if you guys are like we've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you liked it even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Portsmouth and Sleeping Giants Red Star upgrade in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.